Thank you very much, Mr. Watts, and thank you, brethren. Uh, my topic, as was offered to me by the committee, was the prologue of John's Gospel, with particular reference to John 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, my thanks to Mr. Allen for his patience with me in email correspondence regarding speaking at this year's school. And my thanks to the committee for the invitation to address uh, this sublime uh, subject. I am certain there will be many of my own flaws introduced in the course of delivering this paper. Nonetheless, the opportunity of study has been beneficial to myself. And I trust that at least some of the fruit of that may be of benefit to you, brethren, here as well. <clears throat> My intention is to stick with the more expanded title that was given me in the original email, not dealing just with John 1.1 1, 1 itself, but looking at the whole of the prologue in the first half, setting the doctrinal gemstone of John 1.1 1, 1 in a context, and then in a second part, time permitting, uh, look at verse 1 more particularly. Some introductory comments. And speaking of the fourth gospel in general, John Calvin says that the first three gospels show his body, so to speak, but John shows his soul. And there is certainly a spirituality about the manner of John's presentation that is clearly distinct from a historical record alone. And the prologue sets the tone of this from the outset and makes clear that John's great purpose is to bring before us God's revelation of himself through the word, the Logos. And that, I don't think, is in any sense contrary to uh, the purpose.